Hi, everyone. This is Mark, and you are listening to the Ballpark Hunter podcast. I am the regional correspondent for the website Stadium Journey, the industry's leader in sports. Check us out at stadiumjourney.com. Well, with me today is the owner of the Western Nebraska Pioneers, Mr. Chuck Heeman. He's back with us for a second time. I think the last time I talked to you, it might have been with uh, the North Plate team. And this time yep. it's another new new entity. And you're going to tell us yep. all about it. So uh, what is 2025 going to look like for you and your franchise? Yep. Well, yeah, with the well, the Pioneers has been our base uh, for seven years now. So so the North Platte team uh, was a was a two year experiment. We're kind of down to that now. So um, what we're going to talk about today is the Front Range League. It's a league that we launched. Uh, it's kind of a, a consolidation among some teams that are in Colorado and Nebraska. And it, it came from though we kind of have gotten to know each other over the last couple of years. There's two separate leagues in this part of the of the world. There's a the Rocky Mountain League and the Mile High League. And, and what you've got is you've got combinations of teams who do things different ways and in how they how they treat players and how their ballpark standards are and things like that. And, and I want to emphasize there's no there's no right or wrong about that. There's just people do things different ways. There, there are many, many ways. And you know this from, from collegiate wood bat baseball. There are many levels of that. There are there are the, you know, the, your West Coast League, your Northwoods, and your uh, Coastal Plains, the one that do the full-blown uh, fan experience with, with um, fans and sponsors and tickets and all that stuff. And there are levels that that do it as, as you know, more of a – you know, the, the players pay a fee, they come in, they play their games, they get their experience, and they go home. So what we've had in these two leagues over the last years is a combination of those. So some of the teams in each league would do things one way, and some of them would do them the other way. So then when we recruit players to, to come to the Pioneers or the Foxes or Greeley or Boulder, you tell them that they're going to get this experience. So when they come to play the Pioneers, they're going to get uh, a pregame meal, a postgame meal. They're going to have, um, you know, consistent umpiring, consistent field conditions, scoring. They're, they're going to have their stats done for them. You, that's how you get players to come to you because they're going to get that experience. So you do that. Then sometimes when they go on the road, they don't get that same experience. Okay. That makes sense? Yeah, yeah, no, I know. So you you'll, you'll go to a place, and, and and again, there's no there's no wrong way to do it, but it's a different experience. So it's not what you're telling your players that they're getting. So they're only getting a part. So so over the course of the last couple of years, we all know each other in these two leagues. We play each other in non-league games, so we've gotten to know each other over the couple of years, and we've been talking for a few months now. It's like why don't we why don't we form up the, this group of people who want to have those consistent standards. And are willing to do that. And the people that are on the, you know, and with doing it the different way, there's a place for them and they'll be perfect, perfectly fine. Rocky Mountain League is going to be perfectly fine. Mile High is going to be perfectly fine without us in that because they've got, they've, they're doing fine. So that's kind of where this came from. It's like, we want to make sure that our players, when they come to town and they spend 10 weeks with us, they get the experience that we're promising them. So that's kind of where it came from. All right, so pretty much we're looking at the six teams, and, and of course, if people haven't heard, there's going to be uh, Boulder Collegians, Colorado Springs Outlaws, Fort Collins Foxes, Greeley Grays, uh, your club, and the Spradley Collegians. Correct, so, down in Pueblo, yes. Down in Pueblo. So, you know, every, every stadium you go, you're going to have the same treatment, the same type of meal, the same type of uh, – atmosphere i i would assume from a, a ballpark perspective all of these would be ballparks that the players are going to not just city stadiums yeah correct so so the idea is to give them that that experience okay you know, and and, there are, and and again everybody doesn't do things the same way Greeley doesn't draw a thousand people a game we draw a thousand people a game uh the the foxes draw you know seven eight hundred a game so but the idea is when you when when i send the pioneers down to um, Pueblo, there's going to be some fans here. They're going to have music. They're going to have a scoreboard. They're going to have some, you know, some some atmosphere that that that's relatable to a minor league atmosphere. Um, they're going to get fed. They're going to, you know, they're going to be taken care of. They're going to have water in the dugouts, things like that. 
So the the idea is not everybody has to do things exactly the same way. Okay. Yeah. But you have to have certain standards in place as far as player treatment and how you run your game operation, how you run your ballpark. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, I know there's been I've I've talked to other teams and you know, they're sort of the, the, the big shots in the league with their stadium and they may they may host a few more games. But then when they go on the road, they may play eleven o'clock game on a Saturday in, well, in a city there. park. Right, right. And which, maybe you have good umpires and maybe you don't. And maybe yeah. there's water in the dugout and maybe there's not. So while you're able to take care of your people very well, once you send them on the road, they don't get that same experience. Yeah. And of course, then they go back to their college coach and they say, hey, we went to this place and this happened. So then the college coaches call us up and say, hey, what's going on here? So it affects it affects everybody in that you want to you want to have that professional operation and have good relationship with the college coaches that send you players every year. And so that's, you know, it's kind of born from that, too. I, I had a I had a college coach call me this summer and, and I said, hey, we love what you do. And I've known this guy for 15 years. It's like, we love what you do, but I got to tell you, if you're going to send our guys to to somewhere where they're not being taken care of, I'm not going to send you players anymore. So, and I get it. It's not personal. It's business. This is what they want their guys to experience when they send them away for the summer. You know, uh, some of these schools in that are in, you know, California and Florida and Texas, they're sending their guys in the middle of nowhere, Nebraska. They want them taken care of. So it, it all kind of grew from that among the group of us that have been talking for a couple of years. It's like, you know, why don't, why don't we do this? And so the front range league was born out of that. There is no ill will from the leagues that you're leaving. They understood, you know, you guys. Oh, yeah, it's not, and, and again, it's, it's, it's exactly that. I, and I don't want to even give the impression that there is any because, because there's not, it's, it's a different way of doing things. Yeah. Both of these leagues, Mile High and 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 Rocky Mountain, they're going to be just fine. And there may be some consolidation there. I don't know. That's that's up to them. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't like anybody got in a fight and we said, you know, screw you guys, we're out of here, anything like that. It just it's just uh, those of us that want to do it this way are doing this. Those of us that want to do it a different way are doing that. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's that's how it operates. I mean, I I've, I've talked to you know there was a gentleman from the East Coast Collegiate Baseball League, and you know they they sort of told me how they run things and. I'm like, okay, a little different than what maybe uh, the Expedition League did at one point or the Prospect League. And and his yeah. his goal was, you know, this is what our goal is and this is what we're, we're happy with. And uh, right. So different people do things different ways. And there's no, again, there's no right or wrong. It's like, yeah. you know, when a, when a player wants to go play in a league, the player looks at, okay, what is this league? Okay, this works for me. Maybe they play, maybe they play 28 league games and maybe they play 50 league games. Maybe they, have a big travel footprint. Maybe they have a small, maybe it's one of these leagues that all play in one ballpark. So when a player goes, there's different options for that player and they have to decide what they want to, what they want to do. When they come to us, they expect a certain level of, of that. So, you know, we could be doing things at a higher level. We could take private jets to planes or uh, to, uh, to games or something. But when they come to us, they expect this. And when they don't get this consistently, it becomes an issue. And, and word gets back to their prospective colleges. And it's a very, you know, it's a very small world and word, oh, word yeah. travels fast. Yep. Exactly. You you want to be a reputable league where people are yep. happy to send you. You know, I had a, a conversation uh, with a guest about sponsorship and he was asking me which summer collegiate leagues. And this is before I found out about your league. He said, hey, you know, what are the, the more reputable leagues I should talk to? And And to him, you know, all the leagues look alike. You know, it, he doesn't know that one league may operate in this form or another. Right, right. Yeah. So there I are some leagues that don't even do spot that don't even do sponsorships. It's just you're paying your fee and you go play. Yeah, no, and yeah. and and for your league, and I have a lot of airplanes flying over right now. So if you hear that, that's uh <laughs> feels like the last few podcasts. I've tried to mute that out, but when you're I'm talking a little bit, yeah, there's always an airplane flying over. So yeah. Uh, so from a player perspective, I have a, grand, I have a granddaughter over here. I try to mute her out and it doesn't work. So yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what I tell people. Sometimes I talk to some folks with a podcast and they sound like they're coming from a, a radio station studio. God bless them. But you know, I, I got to deal with airplanes <laughs> and barking dogs, depending on what day I'm doing it. I have kids outside <laughs> playing in the cul-de-sac, uh, you know, basement is nice to go to, but then yeah. the reception down there stinks. So then I, I deal with that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So 
these teams that are joining you, a lot of them have a history. They're not brand new teams, correct? Like, Correct. The only new team coming in um, is the Colorado Springs team. It's not the old Colorado Springs Outlaws that were in the Rocky Mountain League. It's actually a, a new team just happens to have the same name. So right, so we're starting with six teams. I, I really anticipate us. Uh, I, I I anticipate us being at ten when we start the season. Really? I think nice. we'll uh, we'll grow to at least eight here pretty quickly. We're talking to some other people, but we wanted to get this thing launched and show people we're doing it, and then we'll we'll attract a couple more teams as we go along. We don't want to get this. You know, you never want to get too big too fast. I don't think yeah. we will. There's really not that many markets in our area. I think I think 10 to 12 is a very comfortable number. 10, I'd be very happy with if we went into the season with 10. Yeah. And uh, the ball, the team in Colorado, what ballpark are they playing out of? Uh, the Colorado Springs team? Yes. Yeah, Colorado Springs. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, there's, there's two fields that he's talking to. He's talking to the folks at Spurgeon. Um, which is a it's a city ballpark. It's it's a, a fairly nice facility. He's also talking to um, University of Colorado, and Colorado Springs. Okay. So he'll and I, I would say more than likely he'll end up at Colorado Springs at the university. Yeah. No, I'm looking at those ballparks right now, and uh, it's you know it, it's amazing. Colorado Springs has just you know maybe a couple ballparks that are ideal for this summer collegiate type of league. So it's uh, you know. You, you got two, not too big, not too small. Yeah, not too they, have, big they have dugouts, they have locker rooms. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. And, okay, and then from a fan perspective, what what can we expect when we come to a game? Is there going to be a, a lot of minor league influence, or is it? It depends prices? on where you go, but there'll be some level of that everywhere you go. Though, I mean, we we we've gone places where they don't even turn on the scoreboard. You know, um, yeah. We've gone places where they don't even chalk the field, so that's that's the part that we're going to eliminate. So okay, nice. you'll have you'll have you'll have PA, you'll have music, you'll have scoreboard. Uh, some people do giveaways during con or contests during games. Some people don't. Uh, I think as we go, we're going to build that fan experience with some of the people that don't do it that much. I know Boulder does a good job. So does uh, Pueblo, um, and the Foxes do a great job. And of course, I'm I'm pretty proud of what we do. So. Uh, I think yeah. as we as we kind of grow this thing, we'll pick each other's brains to see what we're able to do at our ballparks and and build that up as much as we possibly can. And again, you want to give the player that that minor league feel as much as you can. If they get drafted into the minors, this is what they're going to go into. So and it's and it's a more enjoyable time for the players. You know, their families come all from all over the country and and they don't want to just sit there in the sun and, and have nothing going on either. So um, you know, as we kind of build this thing, we're going to uh, feed off each other and and make it a more enjoyable f uh, experience for the fans. Yeah. And, you know, I guess I can you know, speak for you. Uh, Western Nebraska, how are things how are things been out there? You know, you were independent for a, a, a one year and <laughs> you keep and, switching. And, leagues, and that, or... that was that was an interesting year. We learned a lot. And again, yeah. we learned a lot about, you know, who who does things one way, who does things the other. Um Another thing about, about what we're doing here, one thing we found with the Rocky Mountain League is the, the players, um, they, you know, even though it's summer ball and they're, and they're not, you know, um, going to the College World Series, they want to play for something. You know, they want to have a playoff. They want to have an all-star game. They want to have that experience too. And the Rocky Mountain League um, doesn't have that. They, they're tied in with the NBC in Wichita a couple of teams go there and you get to the end of the season and you're just done and you go home. Well, one of the things in the front range league, we are having an all-star game. We're having it at our place next summer. We are having a playoff series first weekend of August, and that's going to be the pattern. So what we found, you know, and, and, you know, the pioneers, we've been in a, in a couple of leagues trying to find that right fit. And a lot of it was travel related. We were taking buses all over the world for, for years and putting guys on buses for 10, 12, 14 hours at a time. Um, then we kind of, we went independent for a year just to kind of see who's who. And now with the Rocky Mountain League, the travel footprint is pretty good. But then you get into that, you know, what we what we had before. So as far as the Pioneers, we're doing just fine. We had, um, we had a good year. It's the first year we've never had a rain out. So that's good. That's huge. Um, we've, we've set our, I know, the first year in seven years with no rain outs. Uh, we set our single game attendance record three times this year. We had our second highest season attendance ever. Um, you know, uh, so 
we're we're doing just fine. So now now we get into bringing back the you know our fans. Our fans expect playoff series. We're used to going to the playoffs. We've been to the playoffs, you know, uh, what four of our seven years, one two championships. So people expect that. So it kind of getting back to that normal summer collegiate season that people expect. So that's that's uh, you know we're doing fine. Yeah, no, I've, I've talked to a few teams that have gone independent, and they like the idea at first because they have a lot of freedom to do what they yeah. want. But you're right. Yeah. They want to join a league because they do want that playoffs. They Their fans right, you know, want right. them to see, oh, win a championship and, and boast about yes. it. So I'm yep. with you yep. there. So like when, when you talk and, about and, attendance. And you, sometimes you don't really know when you go independent. You, you, you learn real fast who, I guess, who you're dealing with, you know, who's reliable and who's going to call you in the morning of a game and tell you they're not coming and things like that. So you learn that pretty quickly too. Yep. Yeah. No, that's, that's uh, it's, you know, it's, it's an interesting amazing. world. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's amazing how, you know, you, you look at the history when it's all, you know, we can look back 10, 20 years from now and we can just see the pioneers, how they went from one league to another. And, yep. you know, hopefully this is your last stop and and this is the league you find a home in for, I think so. And I think, you know, what, what, and I've, I've told a couple of people this, what it kind of comes down to, you want it done right, do it yourself. So the, those of us that, that, that walked into this thing with the front range league, that's what we want to do. It's like, okay, we, we've dealt with this and we've dealt with this and we've dealt with this for a number of years. Let's pull the trigger and do it ourselves and, and do it the right way. And it's, and it's summer ball. And no, you know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that, the teams that are in this league now are going to be in the league in 10 years. You never know, mm -hmm. but, uh, but you do want to find some stability in that. You know, your fans start, start looking at you funny too. It's like, you're in another league and it's like, well, there's a reason for that, mm -hmm. but yeah, you do want to find that stability as well. Yeah. But I mean, you know, when it's all said and done, if they're entertained, if they're having a good time, if they're seeing winning baseball uh, for some of them, beers, cold, hot dogs are hot. Everybody's yeah. happy. Yep. Cold, yeah. cold beer. So all, all ballparks. I don't know if you can answer this. We'll have beer, alcohol, or, is that I don't know that. Okay. I, I don't know the answer. I know some do something. I, I don't know the answer to that yet. Yeah. And then and, and you guys have your own beer pr uh, produced by a local brewery. Is that correct? We do. You flyover brewery does uh does a uh, a beer named after our mascot. So yeah. 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 That's, that's pretty it, cool. Yeah. It, it's it's common. I even saw that in uh, Lake County uh, in the the okay the Lake County corn dogs. They used to be in the pine uh, not pioneer northern league. They went independent. And yeah. it's just, is, is that an easy thing to do to get a local brewery to come in and slap a new label on, make a beer for you? Not, not really, not okay. really. Um, it's so very it's, common. They don't, they don't brew a different beer. They just take a beer that they're already yeah. brewing basically, you know, and, and, and put the label on it. And it, and it's, you know, it's good for them. It's good for us. And they've been, you know, Flyover has been a good partner with us and it's, um it's a good promotion for them. We sell a lot of it. I'm, I'm surprised at how much of what we sell. So they like it. That's even better if you're selling it. So yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So anything else about like right now? You have an off season. You have a true off season to start this this whole new league. What are what are things you're working on? Are you looking to get staff for the front office mm -hmm. uh, marketing? How how is that well, looking? We with the with the league, we are the front office. The yeah. cool the cool thing about 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 the league is is it's the teams that make the league. You know what I mean? The, the so so as far as the league office, the key is to is to pull things together, um, guide people, get them on the same page, and you know, I like I this is my only job. My wife and I this we don't, you know, we don't have another job where we have to fit this in. This is all yeah. we do, so we have the time to do that. So now that we've got this thing together, it's a matter of. Um, doing things like setting up a league store for merchandise, uh, starting to work on the schedule. And some of us can schedule now and some of us have to wait until the beginning of the year because they play at a field that's controlled by the city. So they have to work with that. So, but, but starting to form up that schedule, uh, talking to teams that want to come and join us. We've already had a couple of people feel us out about that. So um, we're going to vet those teams very carefully and make sure that they are going to be able to agree to our standards. Um, you know, uh, talking to people like you and, and getting some publicity for the league. But it, uh, we wanted to get this thing launched at this time because this is when schools go getting back in session. So all of our players, all the all of our potential players are going back to school now. All the coaches that we know that have talked to us about, hey, you know, this is what we want to see. Well, now we're showing them that we're doing it. So now we can go to our coaches and say, 
okay, the things you've talked about is for the, to us for the last couple of years that need to be fixed. Now we're fixing it. So let's start getting players signed. Everybody's signing players already. Uh, I, re I remember when we started doing college ball, um, my wife and I, like 15 years ago, you didn't even think about recruiting players till like Thanksgiving when fall ball was done. And now it's just an ongoing process. We've already got players coming back from last year. Um, it, it, it never ends because there's so many leagues and so many teams. You've got to get ahead of people. So it's really a matter of getting our name out there, getting established. And then we start the, the process of, of the season. And really, again, the, the, you know, the, 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 the teams make the league. We, we play under the collective blanket of the front range league, but there's not, I, I'm, there's, there's always works. I hate to say there's not work because there is, but it's a matter of coordinating with everybody. So the teams have, uh, contribute to everything. We tie it together and we get it out there. But what is right now with the, the six teams, what's the furthest drive? Uh, how, what's the average drive between these cities? The, the further, actually the furthest drive is from our place in, in, uh, in Nebraska down to Pueblo. That's about, about a five to five and a half hour drive. Okay. Uh, Fort Collins, Fort Collins and Greeley are about two hours from us. Um, so, and then Boulder's uh, uh, maybe three, Colorado Springs, uh, three and a half, Pueblo, five tops. Okay. And and I don't, I don't see, I really don't see us getting out of that footprint. There's some, there's some markets in there. There's some areas in there in the Denver area um, that we're talking to that may join us. So I don't see us getting too far out of that footprint. If we play some non-league games against somebody, we want to be real careful about. Like, like we've had interest from the from the uh, Kansas teams, Hayes and Liberal, about playing non-league games. Yes, because they do go to NBC and Wichita, so but they want to make a swing through. So I really don't see us getting much much beyond that. Yeah, no, you, well, yeah, you definitely don't. Well, one of the reasons that we left, one of the reasons that we left the um, the Independence League was was that the travel was just getting nuts okay. for people. So we don't want to get back into that situation. I, there, there's enough, there's enough potential there. Like I say, if we, if we, if we, if our vision is to have this thing at 10 to 12 teams and then be there and be happy with it, there's enough in that area to do that right up and down the I-25 in Colorado. There's a lot of, of nice ballparks and nice places to play. So uh, that's kind of, I don't, I don't see us getting into, you know, into North Dakota or anything like that. Okay. Well, yeah, kind of like the Northwoods League. Those guys are from Kokomo all the way out to the Dakotas. Everywhere, yeah, it's yeah. Like... And and a lot of them, and a lot of them don't even play each other because they're so no, far away. No, you're right. Yeah. One division doesn't like the Co Kokomo team doesn't play the 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 Badland Big Sticks, which I think were in the same league as you as you was one time, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The the Sticks and the uh, Minot, they were yeah, they were in the expedition at one point. Yeah, so. You know, we don't want to get in that situation. I don't. I don't. I don't think we will. And and I don't know if I even want to manage a situation oh, like no, that. No. We're, you know, I'm I'm getting old. I'm 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 running it down. I, I need to yeah. settle in and do this and be happy doing this. And then if we get too weird, my wife's going to get mad at me anyway. And who needs that? Yeah, you just you just want a nice ballpark and a ball team to operate and yeah and, uh, yeah and, and and making sure everybody's treated well. Yeah, making sure the other team shows up, making sure we meet our obligations and do what we say what we're going to do. You know, there's, there's, there, you can, you can get too big and, and I'm just not that interested in that. And I don't think any of us are, none, none of us want to be jumping a bus and going to, you know, Utah or anything like that. So, yeah, no, it, it gets crazy. We hear stories about guys on the road for, you said what, 12, 13 hours on a bus ride. That doesn't sound like yeah. fun. And, well, and that's the, not just the, one time. In the expedition in, in the expedition and independence, we were on a bus to Caldwell, Idaho. It's a 16 hour bus ride. You have to do it over two days. Because the bus driver can't drive that far. They can only drive eight hours a day. So you're taking a two day bus ride to go play some summer league games. And you don't, that's, you don't, you can't do that to kids. You can't, you can't bring a kid yeah. all the way into your, you know, all the way to Nebraska and then say, well, now you're going to go spend two days on a bus to play three games and two days coming back. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to get, you know, we don't want to get in that situation. Like, say, right up and down the area we're at, right up and down the, the, the Denver, Colorado Springs, Pueblo, all up and down there, there's, there's enough potential markets to where we can lands at a nice 12 team league and just be happy with that yeah well and just, that and really the, the more important thing is have those 12 teams or 10 teams whatever it ends up being do things do again do things the right way you know and, and some people can and want to do that and some people that's not what they want to do so we want to make sure that the teams that we have are are in that range where we can have these are the standards when you come to play in our league this is what you're going to get no matter where you go 
You know, you may get you may get steak and lobster in one place, you may get hot dogs in another place, but you're going to get fed mm -hmm. everywhere you go. That kind of thing. So, oh, wow. Who, who's serving Denver? steak and lobster? Is that what we get at Western Nebraska, steak and lobster? Well, yes, every day. We, we fly <laughs> them in from the coast, you know. And <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> but, yeah, I wish we could. But, but you know, it's, it's that, that's it. It's like when you come to our league, you're going to get taken care of. And that, that's what we want to have. Well, it sounds like a sounds like a, a, a bright future here. We're definitely going to be uh, keeping an eye on it. So, where can people get more information on the? Uh, well, I appreciate it. Front Range League. Oh yeah, as we we are, you know, you know how we are. We we get the yeah. word out as soon as we have some word to get out. So we we love, uh, you know, we love the attention and appreciate the time with this. This helps a lot. So uh, as we as we grow, I, I I very again I very much anticipate us being at ten teams by the spring. So. Okay. Um, everybody will know about that and who's coming aboard. Yeah. I mean, we're, I mean, we are really in the first few days of this league. It's, uh, oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It just cracked. Yeah. <laughs> so there'll yeah. be a lot. What lot it looks more. like today is not what it's going to look like in two months. Right. Yeah. A lot more to come. I'm sure we'll see, you know, you said merchandise team stores with, uh, the league logo plus, you know, a yeah. whole range of pioneer merchandise, which, uh, Oh yes, buy all the piles merchandise you can, please. Yeah, that yeah. That, that does pretty well for you, correct? Across the country, people are picking up your caps and shirts. It's I'm very very surprised at at the level of of, of uh, merchandise that we that we go through. You know, it's it's usually in in our business, it's, it's you know merchandise is usually ten or fifteen percent of your of your income every year, and just uh, just that people are wearing our stuff is very it's it's very flattering. You know, it's um so we we appreciate that. Nice, nice. All right. Well, Chuck, I appreciate you coming back on and then talking about your new uh league. Uh where can people contact you if they want to get more info? Um uh, frontrageleague.com. Our info is there. Um our my office phone number's there, our email's there. Uh you can contact me through the pioneers. Um I'm, I'm 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 like Deion Sanders, it ain't hard to find me. Yes. So. All right. Yep. All right. Always willing to talk to anybody about about what we do. We love what we if we if we didn't love what we do, we wouldn't do it. Yeah. No. Go out and make some real money doing something else. So, oh no. Yeah. yeah tell, tell, you know, I got to tell you, I think I contacted you yesterday, and and we're on today doing yeah. the podcast. And there's people that I'm still chasing down. It. Still, pre I well, I go. appreciate you coming on. There's people I'm still chasing a year from now, from small <laughs> summer collegiate leagues. Yeah, we'll come on. And yeah. then that's yeah. it. I hear nothing. I, 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 I don't know what they're up to. They may have, like you said, they may have another job and they just yeah. don't have time. And it happens a lot, but uh, you know, this, again, this is all we do. And, and we just launched this thing. We want people to know about it. So, you know, I appreciate you reaching out and, and again, glad to do it anytime. All right. Well, I, I'm sure a few other guys will reach out to you as well. So. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we'll, glad uh, to do it. we'll, we'll, we'll listen and, and maybe, uh, Maybe I could finally make it out to one of these games, Colorado Springs or Western Nebraska. It's yeah. some of these, some I, know these where, I know where you can get a ticket. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know. Some of these <laughs> I, I mark these these trips sometimes and it's like, okay, another yeah. summer. You didn't do what you said you were gonna do. So we'll we'll have to <laughs> we'll, we'll I'll start planning pretty soon when you get that schedule up. There you go. We'll get it going. All right. Thank you. All right, that was uh, Chuck Eamon, and that's the second time he's been on the show. The, like I said, the first time I think he was, I think they were part of the Expedition, not the, were they part of the Expedition League, or was it the Independence Baseball League? Uh, he was talking about his North Platte team, North Platte team, uh, the Plainsmen, uh, which I think was resurrected in the e Independence Baseball League. Uh, so the Front Range League, uh, you know, whenever I hear a new league, and that happens a lot, you hear about... Uh, one second. You hear, you know, a group of teams getting together, like the East Coast Baseball League uh, got together teams from the Atlantic Coast Baseball League, and they made their own league. And then, you know, we heard the Independence League a few years ago, and the Expedition League was something new. And there's a league out in Maine. I mean, there's so many summer collegiate league teams, and some of us go to these ballparks, and we're we notice things, you know, we go to a summer collegiate league team and there's five people in the stadium and there's nobody taking tickets because there's no staff there. There's no music. There may be, a, there may be a PA guy. The scoreboard isn't working. There's no food there. You know, you start noticing like, man, this is kind of a drab. Uh, and what he says, the front rage league is that, you know, you're going to have alcohol, uh, at his ballpark, he doesn't know about every other place, but 
and there's going to be food. There's going to be some minor league type of atmosphere. And, you know, you just want to be on board with that. And and this is the first, second time I've talked to uh, somebody that's involved with the summer collegiate league team that has told me about how you run your program and how you run your operation affects some of the players coming in uh, from uh, some of these universities and colleges across the country. So that is uh, Chuck Heeman, who's had a long history in minor and summer collegiate league. He can, we can, we can get him on five times and we'll have a totally different conversation each time. So uh, glad that he was able to come on here. Like I said, I texted him, I emailed him yesterday or I, an hour later, he's like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. When do you want to do it? I'm like, how about tomorrow? 430. He's like, okay, there you go. And I have teams that, you know, don't even write back to me. <laughs> they just don't want to talk to me. I don't know. Maybe I tick them off or something. I don't know. I'm just a ballpark guy. Give me a break. I'm a teacher who goes to baseball stadiums during the summer, and puts them on YouTube, um, you know, but anyway, so all right, well, Chuck, thank you for coming on. Best of luck to the Front Range League. Uh, more information coming out. We, are, Like I said, we are in the first few days of this league. Uh, it's not even a week old. He said there may be two to four more teams joining. So by the time their schedule's made and by the time you're out there at a ballpark in the summer of 2025 watching it, there could be some more teams there. So sounds like Denver Fort Collins is a cool place to be. I, I think Paul Caputo might be a little busy this year checking out some baseball games and hopefully they'll have those uh those uh, ice cream caps that he those ice cream helmets that he likes. So anyway, thank you guys for listening to the Ballpark Hunter podcast. This is Mark Viquez saying follow me, Twitter, YouTube, follow me on stadiumjourney.com, the industry's leader in sports stadium reviews. And uh, as always, stay safe. Check out a ballpark near you and happy hunting. We'll talk to you soon.